Right, lovely. <clears throat> okay, well, another welcome to everybody that is uh, joining us today, and of course, those wanting to watch this uh, on playback. Uh, so, Influencer Marketing Roundtable um, is what we go. But before I get going and tell you a little bit about what today's session is all about, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of background on who I am. So, I'm an influencer expert and I help organizations develop and promote their influence. Um, <clears throat> a number of things that I do at the moment is I host my own uh, podcast which is called uh, Influence, the global podcast, now in our third season. And I've interviewed people from all around the world, um, uh, whether they be influencers, whether they be uh, influencer agencies, brands, or just thought leaders. Uh, so uh, just a reminder, sorry, Paul, uh, nice to see you again. If you could just mute, yeah, sorry, mute, mute yourself, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Um, and then um, I've also launched my own book, which is Influencer Marketing Strategy, 300 pages, 88,000 words, not that I'm counting, uh, but that's a real compendium, everything that you need to know about uh, Influencer Marketing Strategy. And then, of course, I also speak at events. I'm a panelist, I'm a host at everything from the Festival of Marketing, the Influencer Marketing Show, and big global conferences. But you can also work with me on a one-to-one -one basis. And how you can do that is I run my own influencer marketing program. And this is primarily for thought leaders or brands. And everybody really wants to grow their influence, really, don't they? But ultimately, for what purpose? Well, they want to create more revenue, charge higher prices, get more customers coming to them, and create uh, content that's consumed by a wider audience. So the way that I've sort of promoted this is through this route map, really, which is a discover, grow and become ideally uh, an influencer. And I do that through a five stage process, which you can read as quickly as I can say. <laughs> um, but this really does work. And that's because I've done that myself. So I used to lead a, an industry body, which is in the promotional merchandise industry. And I stepped out of that to work in an industry which I knew nobody. And in the space of less than a year, I've already been one of the most influential people in the in the sector. Uh, and also, I've set up the Influencer Marketing Division of the Branded Content Marketing Association, written loads of white papers, write for international magazines. Uh, and, I, and therefore, what I want to be able to do is to help other people really do uh, grow their own influence. Right, so today is all about blogs. So I'm just going to share with you my thoughts and ideas around um, what you need to do to really harness the power of blogs. Uh, first thing, of course, to do uh, is to create a great blogging um, or consider a platform that, that really does work for you. Um, there are a number, of course, on the market as well. Probably the most well-known is WordPress. But what I really say before you really do uh, think about creating a blog um, is, is do your research because some of them have got different attributes and it's definitely worth doing, uh, sp spending some time uh, looking at that. I've mentioned a few there, um, Squarespace and Tumblr, Blogger, also very well ranked on, the, on, on Google as well. Uh, second thing is to buy your own domain name. Now it's becoming harder and harder to get .coms, but uh, obviously if you get a really good domain name, this will also help with your SEO as well. Um, just adding somebody else to coming in the room there. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's another really good thing to consider is, uh, is 123 domain is a really good um, website where you can buy these relatively inexpensively. Um, and, and don't forget, if you're buying a .com, do consider a .co.uk because what you don't want to do is have a similar sounding name um, with with uh, something else. Uh, nice to see you, Gemma. By the way, um, do mute yourself if you haven't already. If you can, everybody can mute yourself. That would be great. Thank you. Um, uh, the third thing is to think about uh, br brainstorming uh, some ideas before you create your blogs. I mean, here's just an example of a food blogger, and you can see, um, and by the way, when I say brainstorm, have a look at some of, your, some of the competitors within your sector. Um, what, something I always say to people when you're creating and thinking about content 
is have a look at 10 exemplars or competitors and look at the last 10 posts that they've created and look at what type of content has worked really, really well for them. And sit, when I say worked well, is see how their audience are responding to it. So it's not necessarily just about what you think people would like to know about. Do your research properly. Um, but yes, brainstorming as well is a really good way to uh, think about this. And make sure that you that you record all of this information, maybe in a Google Sheet or something. Um, because what you don't want to be doing is necessarily uh, always doing the same type of content, is keeping it varied. Um, <clears throat> keep your design uh, simple. Um, ideally, stick to mo no more than three colours. Um, I've shown you an example of Dad Blog UK. He, uh, John Adams is a really good friend of mine, and uh, he's award-winning blog. Do go and check him out. Um, it's just an example um, of somebody that's uh, really good, got a really good design, and it's really well laid out. Um, and one of the biggest problems nowadays is people just don't have the time to read loads and loads of words. Um, so what they want to do is they skim read content more than ever. But so the more easily laid out you can create it, the better. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to images, you might like to think about um, organizations like Shut Shutterstock. There are others out there, but that's certainly one that I recommend um, because it gives you an opportunity to get uh, content from uh, royalty free. Um, Certainly, colour makes a big impact on the way that we perceive a brand and content. Um, I picked this up uh, just the other day, which I thought might be quite interesting, and it, it actually is just telling you about the difference that colours can create. Um, this is also about making sure that your brand proposition is, is consistent, not only on your blog, but also on all your social media. So what you don't want to be is having a, a blue and a pink theme and then actually something completely different on your Instagram or your Facebook. Colours mean different things to different people. But nowadays, if something is really well laid out on a, uh, on a blog, it really says a lot about the brand. It says a lot about you. Um, and it's also about making it easy for the eye. Um, but also what you want to do is draw attention to the way that people are taking action. CTA, if you don't know, is call to action. So you might like to have a different color, but keep maybe the features within a, a primary color. Um, the white space cells argument, uh, so, so true. Um, what, what, because of the, our attention spans are getting less and less and less, what we want is we want to see clear messages, clear call to actions, and, and removing clutter. They often say that a, a, one really great image tell, is equivalent to a thousand words. I mean, I, I picked that up, uh, an ad from Mercedes-Benz, which I really did like, actually. It's, it's one of those things that really just stops and stares at you. Uh, and that sometimes is, is certainly what you've got to be thinking about now. The ad on the left was from Volkswagen, thinking small. What a great ad. But, uh, you know, when you're thinking about designing content, do really think about that. And maybe if, you've got a, if you're putting an image within a blog, perhaps leave more space uh, be, 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 between the words at the beginning and the end of that, that image. Um, keep the design goal orientated. So make sure that uh, it's very clear about what your blog is all about, what the value proposition is, what, what's the unique selling proposition, what are you trying to get over. Um, be absolutely clear about your main target audience. Um, something that you might like to consider if you've not already seen or heard is uh, using a headline analyzer tool. So I put in... Um, this morning to the, the Monster Insights tool, 10 great ideas uh, to create inspiring content. Uh, and uh, you can see there, it's got a score of 64. As soon as I added in, uh, that delivers results. It moved to 79, I think it was. 
So what this tool really allows you to do is to play around with the right type of headline that will create greater response. And it shows you how you can do that. So that may well be in emotive words, uncommon words, emotional words, or power words. So that's a really good tool. Um, make sure that you keep your blog to uh, conventions, i.e. having sidebars, headers, maybe subscription op options. Um, if you're writing it, make sure that there's proper, you're, you're crediting your, yourself, or if somebody else, you might have a guest, somebody that's get, blogging for you for as a guest, you might want to put their picture, a little bit about um, uh, who they are, and maybe even a backlink making sure that you've obviously also got search bars as well. Certainly make it responsive. Um, sometimes people say that um, I just haven't got time to design a really great blog. Then if you haven't, then use a designer. If any of you want, um, I have um, a number of people that work for me as virtual assistants, one of which is a great uh, designer. Uh, happy to share his details with you. Um, but certainly make it eye-catching. As I said earlier, our attention spans are dropping all of the time, so we want things that are really going to stand out. Um, you can also uh, make sure that you are using the right keywords that are attributed to your target audience. There's a great site called Uber Suggest that you might want to have a look at, um, but there, of course there are others. Um, and um, WordPress, I think, has got a really good SEO tool as well. Um, stuff like um, Google Resizer, this is important just to make sure that your content works as well on mobile and on different size tablets. There's nothing worse than seeing uh, images that, that aren't working well on different platforms. Um, and of course you might like to consider having reviews like Trustpilot um, and others that are out there because of course that also helps with your SEO as well. Optin Monster is another really amazing tool that you might like to check out. And of course, lastly, is make sure that you promote your blog. Um, it's no point in just having great content if nobody else can see it. And you'd want to share that on different, uh, different sites um, of, within your social media. But two that I recommend in terms of scheduling tools are Hootsuite and Buffer. Um, I don't know if any of you have got uh, experience with those. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, those are really good tools to consider. So that's just a little bit uh, to stimulate some conversation this morning. Um, I hope you found that interesting. And I'd love to know about your uh, stories um, now. So I'm going to stop sharing. And we've also had Gemma join us as well, which is nice. Nice to see you, Gemma. Hello, nice to see you again, Gordon. It's been a long time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I can't see you though. Can't see your face. Where the, are you? Yeah, Where are you? To be honest, working from home life, um, <laughs> my internet sometimes lags very badly when I'm on video calls. And you're also, like you're like foggy. You're like it, there's like know, a fog going on there. I know exactly. It's not, there's something wrong with the camera as well. Oh, that maybe uh, it's the camera. You were, you were fine then, just a second ago. Yeah, it's very strange. So tell everybody a little bit about you and what you do. So I suppose um, I'm actually not starting out in the blogging space or the influencer space. Okay. Um, I've actually been in the influence marketing space since 2013. Okay. Um, so, um, I don't know if you're aware, Gordon, but I actually founded the UK Blog Awards um, and Influence Agency. So I'm quite established in this space, actually. Right. Um, so beyond just kind of blogging and content, um, so all the strategy that comes with it. Um, but that's not everything that I specialise in right now. So I work for a digital marketing agency um, called Alexis. Um, so we basically do everything end to end um, that is digital marketing and activation for clients and obviously influence marketing slots into that. So whether it comes, you know, to placing content um, to strengthen um, client websites um, and brand websites, 
down to kind of influencer activation as well and that layered hierarchical strategy working with influencers so yeah um my experience is quite a mixed bag but what what I'm quite passionate about is integrating that influencer marketing into everything else and making sense of it um for yeah that I work with so just um you mentioned the blog awards so you would have uh, you would have seen some amazing blogs uh over the time I mean you know I'm I, I I'm just sharing some thoughts and ideas this morning but uh you would have seen some great so what what are some of the standout blogs that uh that any that you can recall that have really jumped out at you yeah well I sold the business in 2017 so I've actually been out of knowing and I've been in Malaysia actually working oh. for the past two years as well oh fun um, comes from Malaysia yeah oh did you hear <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah I really miss it so in terms of knowing what good blogs are out there right now on the ground, um, there's there's just so many to choose from. Sure. Um, but at the time as well, when I had the awards, we recognised over 12 sectors as well. So it came from anything from um, automotive. To, we went, we actually recognised B2B and B2C. Um, so we and we recognized individual blogs. So as an individual, if you were developing content, but also companies as well, because obviously companies invest a lot in, in you know, developing blog content and also trying to become influencers within their own right. So when, when I founded the award, I felt it was really beneficial to recognize both and kind of bring both together as well, because obviously businesses were looking for people to collaborate with and vice versa. Um, so we worked. We worked with anyone, and it was free. It was free to enter um, the model, um, and it was based on a public vote. As what the the basically process was a public vote, and then judging assessment, um, which again allowed people to gain that momentum and exposure. Um, so. Um, you know, I had to deal with the website crashing on many occasions. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah it's a bit crazy. But um, so, so yeah, the, I mean, I really, we went from 2013 where we just had traditional blogs, um, you know, copy blogs to, and then we've seen obviously that evolution come in where actually Twitter um, was identified as a form of a blog. And then obviously social media was a channel where influencers would kind of represent themselves and be able to speak. And then there was the likes of YouTube, which, you know, is a video blog. Um, we just don't identify it as that much mm. anymore because mm. it's obvious. So there was just such a such a wide span of people um, and really interesting and really interesting to understand how different people and companies place themselves in different ways and um, how they kind of build themselves up. So as a result of that, I was able to um, work with very big blue chip brands um, across the UK and Europe on, again, how to do that at the same time. Yeah, no, it's interesting, isn't it? How even, I mean, if you think about a typical blog, for some people, they look at that and they say, well, that's just a website. <laughs> um, and it, it's just a terminology. And in fact, many influencers won't even refer themselves as influencers. They will re re um, um, refer themselves as bloggers. Um, and and it's just a it's just a terminology. So if you're a brand, how are you supposed to you know know? And there are other others that call themselves digital creators or content creators. Uh, so it's 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 a real challenge for brands to be able to find all of those types of people. Um, but what what I have seen in the last uh, 12, 14, two years or so is how blogs have become um, you know much much more modern much much more responsive the content is getting even more niche actually um i've i've seen because there's so many that are out there um the more niche it is sometimes the better performing um you know rather than well we're just a lifestyle blog of of all things to all people rather than i'm actually a skin spare spe uh, specialist or or something like that um, and that can be really powerful can't it for a brand to be able to connect with them in that way um so who else has got fun have you got a blog have you got a blog yourself or is the brand you haven't no, no. If, if you did what would you create it on um 
<laughs> Most probably anything to do with playing. <laughs> with with, uh, with with playing. Yeah, I mean, you make money, make more, play more, and serve more. You know, in in that kind of um, context. <laughs> make money, play more, surf more. There you go. That's it. Dot com. There's your blog. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, one thing I think is is really important, I hope that came out, is the importance of research and really understanding what your, what your competitors are doing, what your nearest exemplars might be doing, um, and, and looking and seeing how responsive their blogs are to others. Um, it's super important, that. Um, okay, Paul, have you got a blog at the moment, yourself or for the company? Um, I manage a couple of different uh, blogs for different businesses. Okay. Um, and a lot of uh, vlogging as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so my main interest is in the vlogging sphere. Okay. Uh, and... In terms of YouTube's and things like that. Um, Not YouTube. Using YouTube. Uh, and what are you doing? Tell it. Tell me more about what you, what you're doing. Uh, what does that? How does that translate itself? Um, we do a couple of different things. Um, we promote people's engagement activities um, by filming and um, reviewing events that they might be participating in. Okay. Um, that's primarily what we've been trying to do. Um, that's, that's in a response to COVID. Uh, where obviously um, face-to-face -face participation is quite low. So where, where people have been doing um, in-house events, so we do a lot of schools and enrichment centres and activity centres and places like that. Mm. Um, and we go, in, we go in and make sure that both their internal... Um, stakeholders so for example if it's a, a school or an enrichment center their parents and and partners get to see what's happening at the school whilst also using it as a uh, a student recruitment initiative because obviously as uh, in singapore we've just gone back down into a lockdown again two no ago. really so well it's it's not full lockdown but everyone's been told not to go in and the schools have closed for seven to uh, 11 year olds yeah. so we're back in that again oh um God. but we've been we've been doing quite a lot there's there's uh, four of us um that, that get involved in this i'm fortunate that two two of the two members of the team are actually a, a qualified videographer and a and a sound guy um so that's really where we've built what we've been doing around uh, and what sort of re reaction and responses have you had from the uh, from the vlog? Uh, yeah, we get a lot. We've we've increased people's. Um, there have been a, three or four schools that we've worked with who weren't really um, doing much on social media. Um, they were they were still kind of doing the newsletter. You know, they'll do an email newsletter and things like that, and the occasional. Uh, post um, but our engagement rates are very high uh, we tend to keep it short form yeah so we'll put out we'll put out a two or three minute video that tries to capture people's attention yeah as opposed to you know often often especially with schools I want to get into like learning outcomes and things like that that could take 15 to 20 minutes to explain yeah. Um, whereas we're more involved in um, outreach and engagement, mm, mm. especially with parents not being able to go into schools and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really important. I mean, and, and it's good to hear that you're doing a vlog. What one of the the, the most pa powerful things that people want to see on video now is is storytelling. You know, they want to to understand yeah. a little bit about. And if you look at the way that we're consuming content on something like Netflix, for example. How many of us are seeing films versus episodes of, of we're, we're literally consuming so many of these series, aren't we? And that's translating to video content now as well. So people want bite-sized chunks, but they also want to know what's next. 
and it allows brands and organizations and people to deliver bite-sized bits of content and then if you want to find out more you know uh, come and connect with me next i'll be uh, online again on wednesday at four or i think the most important thing is if you're doing videos is is always bringing people to the neck what's coming next to tell them that when you're going to see, see them again or when they're you know you're going to be online and this is what some of the biggest youtubers do they are consistent is when they upload content and they tell people so it's a regular thing you know for me i do this small group on a wednesday morning at nine o'clock every single wednesday um and you know i get different people that come on now we've had everything from 20 people to four people but it's regular, it's consistent. It allows people to jump in and uh, as as and when, and that works really, really well. Uh, it's about being consistent all of the time. So um, that's really good to hear, Paul. Uh, Chris, do you have you got a blog? Um, well, I kind of post maybe three or four times a week on uh, on LinkedIn, so I guess that's a blog, um, and. I use hashtags to make sure that it gets seen by particular groups at LinkedIn. So it's kind of, it's like posting in several places at once by using hashtags. And when you do, you, do you create, do you write articles on LinkedIn or do you just literally do? Um, I have done in the past. I'm, at the moment, what I'm doing is, is what I call conversational posts. So they're things that are indirectly maybe about things that I'm professionally interested in, but it's more of a, of a, I mean that the um, if you like the um, the style and tone of the things that I post is a bit like having a conversation in the cafe with a friend, or or maybe like the conversation we're having at the moment. You know, quite yeah. Um, so it's it's very informal, very um, friendly, you know, very inclusive, you know. Um, yeah. And then I make sure that I. I'm 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 much more active on LinkedIn over the last six weeks or so because um, I've I've had an opportunity of refreshing the way that I you know can um, organise my day so so I'm now you know spend se several hours or more a day on LinkedIn really? replying to people um, you know putting comments on people's posts wishing people happy birthday you know uh, telling uh, saying you know giving people congratulations if they've got a new job you know that kind of thing just yeah. so i'm engaging with people um yeah. because everything that i do in terms of making a comment is is increasing my profile and introducing me to more people yeah so i'm kind of in that way i'm building my influence on the platform yeah um, you're focusing entirely on linkedin uh well, as, a, as a social media platform yeah because essentially the people that i want to talk to in terms of my businesses and my enterprises would probably hang out on linkedin more than anywhere else that makes I mean, sense but, but I'm, I'm also going to be uh starting up i run a couple of communities at, for creative people at some um, founders and mentors and when i get the bandwidth i'm going to start a monthly newsletter which highlights um, it, it's not about me, uh, because my style of leadership, if you like, is is serving the people that I'm leading. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of, if you like, I'm just I'm just the rudder. I'm just kind of like listening to what people are saying to me, and then making things happen that the group wants. Yeah. Um, so it's. Um, and what and what um, I mean, yeah. what what you're doing there is quite interesting because you're you're trying to create conversations, and yeah. uh, I think one of the things that I would say about content, it has to educate, it has to inspire, it has to entertain, or it has to be controversial. It really, you know, I think our appetite for promotion is is wearing thin. People that are trying to yeah. thrust us and try and sell us stuff. And, you know, I the on some of these get rich quick programs of, you know, do you want to grow your business to seven, uh, yeah. se scale it to seven times is like yawn, yawn. No, I, you know, I might do, but I don't want to be I don't want to be promoted and pushed in such a way. I want to I want to almost discover you. I want to feel that there's that my, I can that I, I, you and I are similar. You know, that's what's really important, particularly. And that's why that's why influencers have been so popular, because they've really resonated well with their audience. 
um, and they come over very sincerely. Um, in fact, I was sp speaking to over 200 students yesterday in, uh, at um, Nottingham Trent University about a competition that I'm running um, on influencer marketing with over 20 brands, actually. And, uh, you know, amongst their generation, you know, millennials in particular and Generation Z, they trust traditional advertising to the tune of just 1%. 1%. Yeah. Yet they will trust their opinions of their peers and their YouTubers or gamer friends more sometimes than their own parents, <laughs> which I think is quite fascinating. Well, I think that's the key word. Authenticity is the, is the key word. Yeah, um, and, yeah, and also it is. It is. Um, I'm I'm also a firm believer that um, that if you if you um, appeal to Generation Z, Generation Z people, then my view is that that generation are the people who are the transcessors. They are. So so if you can get it right with that group of people, then essentially their influence percolates upwards to older age groups. And it's happening already. It, it, I mean, one of the things that the last uh, 18 months has shown us is how their generation really adapted super well in terms of t online technology. Whereas, but it did push it, push its way up. I mean, my, my dear old mum, who's 86, is, is a real Zoomy now. She's really good on Zoom. But I know a lot of people within the home that she is um, just have not adapted to it or, you know, get very flustered and worried about it. But I think that the technology has helped enormously. So we've seen some bloggers in particular be very successful in all sorts of industries. It's not just about fashion and beauty and gaming. You know, there are bloggers out there that are, um, you know, plumbers, that are construction builders. Um, what is important is that they keep close to their niche and that, and that they, their content is really targeted towards their audience. Uh, and they allow their audience to ask them questions and comments and do things on a consistent basis. Um, so, Gudjit, um, you are, just tell me a little bit more about, do you, is your agency have its own blog? Or I'm guessing, are you creating blogs for your, for your customers as well? You yeah, writing a, yeah, combination. a combination of both. So right. I think primarily we, um, on our company website, we have um, blogs on there from employees. So it's probably more in a professional setting. And I think yeah. what we're trying to do is um, strengthen our website and, and actually share our point of view. Um, so, so I think, you know, the type of content we have on there is actually you know, it's, it's really broad because it's a combination of, you know, um, topics that people are personally passionate about, but also trends in healthcare that we want to have a point of view on. So it's really broad, the type of content we publish. So, you know, we've done blogs on um, addressing vaccine hesitancy, on um, actually the power of hope in helping to improve um uh, patient experiences um, and then also we'll create blogs for say you know World Mental Health Day which is taking place on Sunday and and the, the steps we take as uh, individuals to help um, manage mental health so it's 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 a bit of everything from personal experiences all the way through to professional um, topics that we know are going to be important topics in the healthcare space so I think definitely what I've learned today was um, actually looking at what competitors are doing. So like in my field, it would be looking at other healthcare agencies and making sure that we've already got, you know, some tools that we can use to create engaging titles. Um, I think the format of our blogs is quite, is, it's just, we don't, we haven't designed any of our blogs. They're just, you know, all written in word, but otherwise I think I've taken some good learnings here in terms of making the content look more engaging um, and then I we also on occasions develop or give guidance to our um, uh, other businesses on creating their own content as well so I, again what I've taken from there is making sure that that content is authentic because um, it needs to I guess you know we're in a spot where we're you know we're an external agency but we need to give guidance to businesses on creating the content that's going to 
be true to their voice without us telling them what to do absolutely and what to, do and what to say absolutely so. yeah and 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 actually when it comes to influencers um in particular sometimes what they want is guidance about what message they're trying to create without having it thrust down their throat yeah. in other words um don't tell us what to say tell us how to say it we will get your message out in, a, in, in our tone of voice to our audience because to an influencer, the most important thing to them is their audience. They've built it. They've grown it. And that, that audience trusts that influencer because they like it. So it's for the, they're almost like the middleman as conveying the brand's message in such a way that it creates its own voice. But what is fascinating, of course, is is that um, by using influences, it can really grow different markets. It can grow opportunities like the brand has never even thought about. Um, I always say don't involve an influencer just as amplifiers. Involve them as part of the early adoption process. So we are thinking about running a campaign around this, this and this. But we'd like rather than just involving them just as amplifiers at the end, um, like a media buy, think about them as part of the creative process because they may well be able to translate your message in a way that you guys have never even thought about. <laughs> um, and, and we've been talking a little bit about video, haven't we, um, uh, as well. But it could be that, um, you know, they might be able to create some content that, you, you, that really sort of blow, blows your mind um, if you think about transitions and things like that. Hi, Lizette. Hi, sorry, I'm so late. You missed it all. <laughs> I <know. laughs> but uh, anyway it's nice to see you um well just just for the purposes of everybody else tell tell us what you do um and uh, do you have and tell us if you've got a blog as well i do i do so i run doggy lottery which is a um non-profit that uh, raises funds for rescue centers in need through an online lottery um and yes i do have a blog um and really yeah you it's really going well. Is it? Um, yes. On, yeah. on what, on, on how, on when you say going well, what does that look like? What, what platform have you got it on, by the way? Um, I run that on my website, so that's on WordPress. WordPress, yeah. Yeah, WordPress. Um, and I say it's successful, but it's successful at the moment just with my email list. Um, but I haven't been able to get that properly rolling out on social media so is there's still a lot of work to do on that side Okay, we 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 there's loads of tips that I shared uh, earlier, which you can sure. see, we can use to see on the record button here, and you can also find out about what people are, are doing as well. So, um, if you want to just put your uh, LinkedIn or your your contact details or whatever in the in the chat as well. Um, oh. um, I've also just a reminder. I've put the Facebook group in there. I think um, I can't remember. Lizzie, are you in the group? I know Gujit yes. isn't. You are in the influencer marketing Facebook group. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. that's great. Um, but do do join, and we'll ha we'll have you in there uh, as well. So that's good. Um, okay. Um, so what else can we talk about when it comes to blogs? Um, what I tell you, what would be really interesting. What blogs do you follow? any of you what blogs do you follow personally and tell me why i think that would be quite interesting to hear so are you are you uh, connecting to people what, what is it that jumps out at you from other people's blogs any any comments and thoughts the the blogs that i follow i do that to pick up ideas for myself yeah, and what 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 what's jumping out at you from from, from memory? Is it the type of content? Yeah. Is it the way it's presented? Is it the the engagement from the people that are there? Um, probably a bit of both. So it's the title mainly that grabs me. Okay, um, I get inspiration of different titles because they have to be strong and. Yeah, um, we've funny. talked we've talked about the headline analyzer tool. Um, oh, earlier which is a really really good thing to do and using um i was just saying to the guys earlier when you just b before you're about to put that into um post your blog um and you you try this uh, headline to, uh, analyzer tool out um, as i did actually early this morning and i changed it so my score oh. was my score was 64 initially and then i changed it to 70 by just adding that delivers results 
moved to 79 and I oh, reckon okay. if I tweaked it higher I could move it up and up and up um but it's really interesting to see how that plays out I mean um I think it's monster insights that uh, that, that happens but it's it's certainly worth doing but you mm-hmm. also want your blog to be found this is the most important thing it's not just about you you promoting it on social media you want it to be found that's why keywords are really really important um, and making sure that you have the optimum number of keywords. Um, we haven't talked about the length of a blog. So what's your thoughts on an average length of a blog in terms of word count? Thousand words? Yeah, we, we tend to stick to between 800 and 1,000. Yeah. Anybody got any other thoughts on that? What you, what you Gemma, what, 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 what do you think? depends on the depends on the content type um and the topic actually because if your if your blog content is actually if images are delivering quite a lot of messaging yeah the direction you would you could aim for fa- up to 500 words um and as long as you've got some nice link building within your blog content um that and you're tagging all, all of the um, images as well then that will still ensure that your content is strong um but i think it's important to do a mix and within your con- your blog content planning and strategy to to test that mix as well because it's about understanding what the audiences that are coming to your blog what type of content are they interested in and testing testing that readability and that approach as to how long those people are staying on those pages what is being viewed more and then that can then feed into your blog strategy as to what sort of content that you need to push out absolutely i think it's a really good point to be fair um it might mean that over if you were to do one blog a week is maybe you do two of 500 and then two of uh, slightly longer a thousand um and um but but yeah test and measure test and measure is so so important all of the time um in fact some of the biggest content creators they are absolutely locked into their analytics they know exactly what type of content um i've forgotten there's there's a there's a great author um that created has written a book called a million followers in one month um, I must get out and find it but he but he and i when I remember reading that he talks to, uh, religiously about testing the content all of the time testing the headlines testing the length testing the amount of um uh the 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 time of day it's being posted because that's another thing as well if you're if you're uploading it and posting it on social media you don't want to be doing that at lunchtime when hardly any of your audience are there knowing when your audience is and i don't mean just oh on average facebook is most people on facebook at a certain time your audience might be different for example i know that a lot of people on the um in funny enough in the influencer marketing secrets group are now in different parts of the world particularly america well because they're in america then this time at this meeting that we have here at nine o'clock on a wednesday is not is not perfect for them so that's made me think, right, well, I now need to think about doing another session, uh, maybe early evening, which means that it's, it's you know, morning in, in the West Coast of America. So it's, it's really understanding about where, where your audience is, where they're online. Um, there are keyword tools as well where you can, and I know my SEO guy has actually, um, I must find out about it. I should have found out about it for this session, actually, but I'll, uh, I will dig it out. And if any of you want to find out more, this, this tool, actually, you, you put your blog into this tool and it allows you to see for the, for the title that you're looking for um, the average number of keywords that are in similar articles. So what it does is it measures what's online. It looks at, so for example, how to influence people. Let's just say I wanted to write an article, how to influence people. What it will do is have a look at similar articles and how many times and keywords that have been used within that. And it measures yours against that that's online. So it's really, really helpful. And what I'm able to do is write, so I'm short on the word influencer on, in the article because it's only I've only mentioned it twice and the average is six. Um, 
do you see what I mean? So there are no, there are that that that's a really good tool. I must find out what it is, and I'll 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 drop you a line. I'll put, actually what I'll do is I'll put it in the uh, in the Facebook group um, as to uh, so you can actually have a look at it afterwards. Cool. Okay, guys. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, Paul and Christopher, you put your hand up. So tell me, ask me. Hi. Um, no, in in regards to what you were saying, Gordon, about the. Uh the tools for bloggers there's a there's a website called writer i think it's r-i-t-r dot m-e writer dot me right um and what that allows people to do is put in their content their written content and then it and then it will uh, automatically reference other citations and write in a style of your choosing so if you want to be persuasive or empathetic or whatever and it will just rewrite your your text for you. That's good. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And there's a free there's a free version and a paid option. What? Just remind me again. Let me just put that into the into the chat. Um, how do we? Um, what's 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 the what's the word again? I think it's writer r i t r. Dot m e. It might be r y t r dot m e, but I think it's r i t r dot m e. Right. Okay. I'm just. And we we've used that a couple of times when we want to um. When when we've been asked to to write, you know, a short bit of content for someone in a specific um tone. Okay. Great. All right, guys. Super. Thank you, Paul. Um, we've got a couple more minutes. Um, Chris, do you want to just say a lasting um, point of view? Oh, you've gone mute. <laughs> yeah, it happens at least once a day. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, really important thing about, about blogs, which we've not mentioned so far. Um, quite often, when you go there, you won't see the whole piece. You'll just see the first few uh, hundred characters. So on LinkedIn, for example, it shows you between 200 and 250 characters, including spaces, before it then has a link that says see more. So if you're interested in the first 200 to 250 characters, then you might click on the see more button to read the rest of the blog post. Yeah, so the, so, import, the importance is getting that first bit really powerful. So what, you, what you really have to do is that opening, uh, I guess, 200, what would that work out at about? probably 75 words that you know that the opening 250 characters and it might be different on different platforms and if you have your own um theme on your own sort of blog sort of template within say wordpress or whatever then each of those themes in the blog part of it may have a different number of characters so you're going to have to test it um, but it means that you have to create your content according to the restrictions and the specifications of the way in which your content is displayed on the, on, on the blog. Yeah. Um, and another point is that although they've recently changed the rules, uh, LinkedIn only allowed you to post um, 1300 characters um, in a, in a blog post before they simply, they just cut it off at 1300 or they, or they wouldn't post it. Yeah. Um, so, and that's quite a good discipline because I think the reason they they set that, limit was that that's probably the optimum number of characters that people actually read um, and that works out so, uh, so and so the idea is that if you style it so if you've got a beginning which is like the the bit that gets people to read the rest of it that's about 250 characters then you've got in the middle you've got maybe about 800 about 800 characters and then whatever's left which is say another 250 300 characters is it, and in the closing, the things that really work well in blog posts are closed questions. So if you say things like, you know, um, would you agree with this? Yes or no sort of thing. Yeah. Um, then what you're doing is by asking, by asking it that way, you're encouraging people to put things in the comments. Yeah. And that's the key thing for engagement. Cool. Lovely. Guys, we come to the end of our session today. Um, hope you found it really useful. It's been lovely to see you all. Um, hopefully we've had some really good uh, uh, thoughts and ideas that everybody's shared, plus some of the things that I mentioned uh, earlier. 
Um, do go into the Influencer Marketing Secrets group when I post a video. Do say something about it. The more people we can get to these events, the better. Um, it's really good. Uh, value your time as well. Um, and if anybody wants to link up with me um, for a sort of half an hour session, happy to sort of share stuff that's much more relevant specifically to you as well. Um, have a lovely day, guys. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. Bye. Bye-bye.